This is the first slide of many to talk to you about a very simple fact, and that is the reason why we need to pay attention to the fact that these folks are survivors doesn't have hardly anything to do with their cancer. It has to do with the treatments. The treatments are toxic. The treatments are difficult. And there are a number of adverse effects of those treatments. This is a table that is directly out of the first round table on exercise and cancer from ACSM. It's available as a free download on the website. So we're going to go through a few of those things rather than look at one table for 10 minutes. How about that? Cool. So there are a number of physiologic outcomes that are expected to be improved by exercise training for patients and survivors. Um, cardiovascular fitness, believe it or not, we actually have seen an improvement in cardiovascular fitness in metastatic patients while they're undergoing their treatment. Muscle strength, bone health, body composition, range of motion, balance and flexibility, and in breast, colon, and prostate cancer, we have a reduced risk of recurrence of those cancers uh, from large epidemiologic observational studies, and there are ongoing trials to verify that. Then there are a number of symptoms and psychological attributes that are improved by exercise training during and after treatment in cancer patients and survivors. Uh, the majority of the research in this area has been done in breast cancer patients, but there is no reason to believe that it would be different in other tumor types. Uh, the improvements include improvements in anxiety and depression, mood and self-esteem, fatigue, and quality of life. So there's that quality of life, am I? <laughs> So, uh, and I'm not kidding, that is a term that I have heard multiple times from the patients and survivors uh, when I talk about, well, you know, we need to be worried about your BMI because it could have something to do with your recurrence. And I've heard, I don't care about my BMI, I care about my quality of life, am I? I've heard that from patients. So in 2010, the American College of Sports Medicine published the first ACSM roundtable guidance on exercise for those who have had a diagnosis of cancer. And then in 2012, the American Cancer Society followed suit. They have been publishing guidelines uh, for a number of years for uh, cancer survivors, but they uh, quoted the 2010 ACSM guidelines as being right on. This is, you know, we're in agreement. We endorse those. And then in 2013, the National Comprehensive Cancer Network followed suit. Um, and you can see that, I'm sure you can read that tiny print, um, that they actually uh, also cited uh, the 2010 um, Schmitz et al. ACSM roundtable paper as their source for their guidance as well. This one is pretty important. The National Comprehensive Cancer Network is an affiliation of almost 50 large cancer centers across the United States that come together to form um, the guidance for how cancer patients should be treated from the point of diagnosis through recurrence and death for all elements of, of treatment and survivorship care. And the fact that they saw fit to add exercise because ACSM had come forward with these, this uh, you know, peer-reviewed evidence-based guidance um, was, was uh, a pretty important step in the field of exercise oncology.